What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Friday edition of the Fantasy Q&A Show. I am Marcus Grant, joined by Michael F. Florio. Right over there is the specialist, the cast of dozens that helped us put on this show. There are fewer specialists today, probably because <laughs> it's the day after Thanksgiving. Hopefully, you and your family and friends had a great holiday, and I'm sure that there are plenty of folks here who are on our staff who are probably still dealing with a food hangover. Uh, how was your day? I mean, your bills got a win. They pulled it out. They made you sweat it out. Uh, but <laughs> beyond that, how was your Thanksgiving? It started off with much more sweat than I anticipated, uh, but then it was good. I ate a lot of food, then I went home and ate some more food, so I guess that was like a, a pretty good Thanksgiving. Uh, this turkey really likes Thanksgiving. I, I would think a turkey wouldn't you be would a fan of it. You would think that a turkey would probably be afraid of Thanksgiving, but instead <laughs> he's got a number one foam finger on. Yeah, uh, my Thanksgiving was a lot like yours. Ate a lot of food, watched a lot of football, and then just because I didn't have enough food on Thanksgiving, I sort of remixed it for breakfast uh, the following morning as what well. Do you, what do you do for breakfast? So I actually took, I know nobody cares about this, but I don't care. Um, I actually <laughs> took some honey butter, and I scrambled it with some cornbread and turkey and mixed it with some eggs. It was fantastic. That sounds very good. Washed it down with a cup of coffee, and I am now ready to go. It is, of course, the Fantasy Q&A show. You know how this works. We are dedicated to giving you what you want. We answer your questions on Twitter that you send to us at NFL Fantasy, and the ones that we don't answer, we send to Aaron Tan, because I don't even know if he's heard of collard greens, let alone eaten one. So uh, when you eat a green vegetable, then you can stop answering questions. That's His all it Thanksgiving is. plate is just turkey. I it's imagine. probably just turkey and like ham. Mashed potatoes. Mashed maybe, potatoes, something like that. It. He does like potatoes. Like that's the closest thing to a vegetable <laughs> that Aaron will eat. We got plenty of stuff to talk about. Let's start with the three Thanksgiving Day games. First off, as I mentioned, the Bills squeak past the Lions. 28-25, Josh Allen nearly 30 points. Stephon Diggs over 21. Isaiah McKenzie a big game with more than 22 points. On the flip side, Jared Goff got you almost 18. And Jamal Williams, a long touchdown run, but lost a fumble. Just over 10 points for him. I'm on Ross St. Brown. I was thankful for the sun god on Thanksgiving Day. Nearly 28 points for him. The next game up was the Cowboys over the Giants, 28-20, to in a game that sounded a lot closer in the final score than it actually was. Daniel Jones, 14 and a half points, just over 15 for Saquon Barkley, nine points for Darius Slayton. Dak Prescott with almost uh, 15 points. Zeke got you 16 and a half and just shy of 18 for C.D. Lamb. Then in the nightcap, it was the Vikings in a thriller over the Patriots, 33-26. Mac Jones got you 23.3. Ramondre Stevenson, it is still Stevenson Seasonson. He got you more than 20. Nelson Aguilar coming out of nowhere to get you 18 and a half points for those of you who observe, I guess, Nelson Aguilar in your lineups. Kirk Cousins trying to shake off the primetime narrative, 22, uh, just shy of 22 points for him. Justin Jefferson got you 29.3, 15 from TJ Hawkinson. I don't know if you saw, there was a tweet that I, I got, I think you were tagged in it, someone asking if it would be crazy to sit Justin Jefferson, and I said, yes, yes, it would. Yes, like, yeah, yes. okay, tough matchup against the Patriots, you would have, your Thanksgiving would have been ruined if you <laughs> sat Justin Jefferson and watched him go off. The argument night. was it was a tough matchup. Kirk Cousins in prime time. Do you stay away from him? I said, you absolutely do not stay away from Justin Jefferson. So hopefully that person listened and they put Justin Jefferson in their lineup. But let's talk about some of the guys that we saw on Thanksgiving Day. If you could pick one guy that kind of stood out to you amongst those three games, who was it? Uh, TJ Hawkinson had a, a very good game last night, and uh, to me, it stood out because Hawkinson has been a very, very reliable tight end since he became a member of the Vikings. He's averaging just under 13 fantasy points per game. His 22% target share is fifth amongst tight ends in that span. He's second on the team in end zone targets. I know Adam Thielen had a big game last night, but it really feels like Hawkinson has come in. He is the number two target now for Kirk Cousins and the Vikings, and especially in the red zone where Thielen used to make his money. He caught the game-winning touchdown yesterday, but Hawkinson scored a touchdown as well. He's been getting more end zone and red zone targets. He is one of the, he's not an elite tight end like, like a Kelsey or an Andrews, but he's in that secondary tier there with like a Schultz, uh, Kittle. We lost like Ertz and Goddard from that tier, but Hawkinson is very much so in that tier. With Ertz and Goddard out, I think Hawkinson really does have top five tight end potential the rest of the way. And I think it was, I think what you talked about with Thielen is important because Aside from last night, really the last couple of games, he's sort of doing a lot of the things and working in the part of the field where Adam Thielen works, and that sort of worked in his favor, and that was sort of nice if you started Thielen to see him have the nice game yesterday, but in the end, I think TJ Hawkinson is sort of taking away from what he does there. 
I'm going to go with Hawkinson's old teammate, and that's Amon Ross St. Ooh. Brown, who had a big blow-up game against the Bills, 122 receiving yards. More importantly, had a touchdown because – the floor had been fairly safe, but the ceiling had been pretty low for him recently. But what I loved about him was the fact that the usage rates were always the same. He was still getting a ton of targets. I think he was getting targeted on 34% of the routes he had been running previous to Thursday. And only Tyreek Hill had a higher number, which tells you wow. how much they were using him in that offense. It just had been a while since he found the end zone. That finally happened. So it was just a nice reminder of what he can be, why you don't get away from him just because every week there's the potential for something like that from ARSB. Can we can we call him that? I, I love that. All right. And I'm super excited. I, I don't know if we're going to get to see a whole lot of it this year, but like him and Jameson Williams with the yeah. potential QB upgrade next year, that that's going to be scary. It is going to be scary. I, I say ARSB and I just think like ASMR and it's weird to me. <laughs> that's just me though. Uh, let's get to some of your questions over there on Twitter. While Twitter still exists, you can still send them to us. This one from Jackson BB asking, do I start Amari Cooper or Latavius Murray at the flex? Amari has more potential to put up big points, but Murray is projected more and has a better matchup. This is an, an interesting dilemma right here. It, it is. Uh, I, I do agree that Latavius Murray, I think, is the safer floor here, but Amari Cooper's at home. We know that's great for him. Uh, Amari Cooper, I think, is a guy that you just have to start every week. He's a wide receiver one, top 10 on the year. Uh, eventually, maybe we'll stop treating him as if he's not a wide receiver <laughs> one, uh, but for the time being, I, I would still definitely start him. I would think Amari Cooper for me as well. I like Latavius Murray, but I think he's more of a flex option, kind of a sleeper option this week, mostly because the Broncos just don't score points. I mean, that, that to me is sort of the scary part. At least the Browns have the opportunity to score more points. So I would go Cooper over Latavius Murray, but I don't, I don't think it's a ridiculous question at all. Next one, this one coming from Evan, who wants to know, some guy dropped Jamar Chase yesterday and I picked him up. Do I start him this week or no? I, wait, let's back up to the first part there. Yeah. What's going on in your league that someone dropped Jamar Chase, but good on you for picking him up. I mean, I'll jump in. Yes. Is if he's questioned right now, he's listed as questionable for the week. So if he's playing, you're starting him. It's it's that simple for me. Yeah, I agree. Especially because no team has struggled more against the deep ball than the Tennessee Titans this season. And Joe Burrow is arguably the best deep ball thrower in football right now. So uh, those two things paired together with the fact that even a limited Jamar Chase is uh, a scary sight for opposing defenses. So, yeah, I, I would be starting him. And, man, I don't know why he was dropped. Like, I don't know. Even if you're the person who had him and you're like, I need to win, like, that's when you trade him. You don't drop him. I just, I'm just wondering what's going on that, that you dropped Jamar Chase. Like, there's nobody else on that roster that was that was droppable besides Jamar Chase. That, that's the ultimate head scratcher for me. One more before the break. This one coming from Dan Britton who wants to know, do I start Travis Etienne or Jeff Wilson? Etienne has the volume. Wilson has the better matchup and seems to be getting more and more work. This is a really tough one. Mm -hmm. I, I never am a fan of saying sit Travis Etienne. He is that good. But this week, I think I roll with Jeff Wilson Jr. Uh, just because the Texans, man, they allow by far the most fantasy points on the year in the last month. They're, they've allowed the most rushing yards in total, the most rushing yards on outside runs, and the second, no, most on inside, second most on outside. Like, they're just bad at all <laughs> right. types of runs. So with Raheem Mostert banged up right now, I, I would – Go with Jeff Wilson, but I don't think there's a wrong answer. I don't think there's a wrong answer. I, you know, I originally said ETN. I'm wavering. I'm thinking maybe Jeff Wilson, but but I'll make the case for Travis ETN. And it really is, I think, a case of volume for him right now. I don't know that I love his matchup this week, but the fact that he's running the ball effectively and he's getting more and more involved in the passing game, which is something we didn't see early on in the season. We always talk about how much more valuable those targets are. So if that really is going to be a big part of what he does, then I do think there's more volume. And on top of it, look, I know that the Jaguars signed Daryl Henderson. He's not expected to play this week while he's still learning the playbook there in Jacksonville. And as long as, you know, the, the passing game opportunities exist for ETN, then right now he's still a three down back in Jacksonville. We are just getting started here on the show. We got some sleepers coming up and uh, some more of your questions that you're sending us on Twitter. Stay tuned for some more of that and a whole lot more goodness on the Fantasy Q&A. It's time for Game Changers, presented by Visa. Anyone can change the game. We get to talk about some sleepers for Week 12, and who are some folks that maybe we shouldn't sleep on this week? 
this is a deep sleeper, but I think Elijah Moore. He's it, back. He's back because <laughs> no Zach Wilson, and even Elijah Moore has been saying, like, I don't know what I have to do to get the ball from Zach Wilson, but now you just got to try to get the ball from Mike White. And the thing is, Mike White, as much as we talk about him liking to throw to running backs, he also doesn't throw downfield to his receivers. In fact, 26% of his pass attempts last year went to the slot receiver, and that bodes well for Elijah Moore, who has been lining up in the slot primarily as their top slot receiver in New York. So you see there he played well last year with Mike White. Again, this isn't like a, hey, I'm going to pick up and start Elijah Moore, but if you're in a deeper league or maybe your waiver wire is pretty barren and you need a, a flex or something like that, I, I think there's some deep league appeal for him right yeah, now. Don't go starting Elijah Moore over like Amari Cooper or something like or that. Or Justin Jefferson. Week. Or Justin Jefferson. <laughs> Thankfully, he's already played, so that's not <laughs> that option is uh, taken out of your hands. I mentioned Latavius Murray a little bit earlier in the show, and I think he's got some sleeper potential this week, in part because I don't see anyone who's really going to demand opportunities behind him there. Now, Marlon Mack has been elevated from the practice squad, so we'll see what kind of snap share he gets, but I still think this is the Latavius Murray backfield with Melvin Gordon now released, Chase Edmonds out of action for the next couple of weeks, and it's a really good matchup against the Carolina Panthers. Now, the downside is that, as I mentioned, the Broncos really struggle to score points. They are last in the NFL in points per game, but I do think the potential volume here, maybe a shot to get a touchdown near the goal line, is what sort of salvages Latavius Murray, and I think he's worth a sleeper opportunity this week. Let's get back to your questions, because, of course, this is the Q&A show. This next tweet coming from Johnny, who wants to know, should I start David Montgomery over Damian Pierce this week? This is a really close one. Uh, I'm going to ride with Damian Pierce here. Uh, just I know he's coming off of his worst game of this season, but that was against the Washington Commanders, who have been elite at stopping running backs, especially as of late. In this last month, he's faced three teams that were in the bottom 10 in, in terms of production allowed. Two running backs, his schedule starts to open up. The Dolphins are kind of middle of the pack this year against running backs, but I, I still think they're going to look to get uh, Damian Pierce the ball plenty, especially early on, keep Tua on the sideline. And, hey, maybe the quarterback change just means a couple more dump-offs for Damian Pierce. That, I think, is the deciding factor for me, too, in going with Pierce, just because I think that uh, you, you can kind of glean that way. But you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to still say David Montgomery. I think, it's your guy. I think that he's been my guy. There's no Khalil Herbert. Um, you know, we'll see what happens with Justin Fields, but I do think David Montgomery has a really good opportunity, even in what's not a great matchup on paper because the Jets' defense has been pretty good. But I think the ability for the Jets to shut down the passing game may sort of win the day. This is still a run-heavy Bears offense. So let's go with David Montgomery there. But I do like Damian Pierce this week in what, you know, I, I won't say it's going to be a high-scoring game against the Dolphins, but, you know, maybe the, the Texans have to lean on the running game a little bit more in that one. Speaking of the Bears... This one from T, who wants to know, if Fields is questionable, should I consider starting Justin Herbert against Arizona? Yeah, I think this is a great fallback option. I, I continue to say, like, if Justin Fields plays, I would play him. But I'm very bullish on Justin Herbert this week. So I'm okay with you just making that pivot. But I, I also think, like... Hey, if, if Fields can't play, like Herbert is probably the best fallback option you could have right now. He looked healthier last week, averaging more air yards per attempt than he has in any game this year. He was also running more. His receivers are getting healthier. And then Cardinals, they just give up a bunch of production. It's a great matchup for Justin Herbert. I would say wait as long as you possibly can to make that decision. Hopefully uh, later on Friday or maybe Saturday we get some sort of clarity as to what's going to happen with Justin Fields. If he's playing, it's hard to get away from him just because he's been playing so well right now. Yeah. But, man, if, if your backup, if you're, you know, you're settled for is Justin Herbert against the Cardinals, you're doing okay. So, like I said, wait as long as you possibly can before you have to finally pull the trigger on that decision. Next one from Sabrina. Do I start Leonard Fournette or drop him? Don't drop him. This should either be a starter bench question. I was going to say, why are those the only two <laughs> options? Like, there's there's no chance. They don't they play in a league where there's no benches or something like that. Um, yeah, I would start Leonard Fournette if he plays. Uh, the Browns are one of the worst uh, units at stopping the run. If it wasn't for the Texans, we'd be talking about the Browns' defense struggles against the run a whole lot more. Uh, they just got torched last week by the Bills, who were one of the worst rushing attacks in the league coming into that game. Uh, 
I know he's banged up right now, and, and everyone's trying to hype up Rashad White, who I like a lot as well, but I, I would definitely be playing Lenny still. Rashad White's a nice sleeper candidate, and if, if Fournette can't play, then I think you're all in on Rashad White this week. But, yeah, start Leonard Fournette. If he can go, they're going to run the football very well. I don't know how much I can really – trust Tom Brady to throw the football. Plus, if they do have to throw it, they can always throw it to Leonard Fournette. So I think you should absolutely start him if he's good enough to go for the Bucks. But also, I don't know, figure out the bench situation so it's not a start or drop <laughs> situation for you on a weekly basis there, Sabrina. We still have a Monday night matchup to talk about. We will dive into that. Plus, we'll take a trip around the World Wide Web. That's coming up as we wrap things up on the Fantasy Q&A show. This show told me, Game Debut, my favorite. Oh, I love that show. There's that uh, small little man. So small. I'm yeah, saving the rest of the show. Yeah. There's no yeah. meme alert. It's a just, Greg. The Patriots are winning this game. <laughs> Gave this man the best moment of his life. That is fun football. I'm going 28 to 20 in favor of the Bills. Stop. I'll it's myself, old. too. Gangling. <laughs> It's time for Finger Licking Good start of the week presented by KFC. We're diving into the Monday Night Football game. It's the Steelers and the Colts. And do you have a must start for this matchup? Yeah, I think Michael Pittman Jr. is in play as a must start option for, for the Colts right now. Not only have the Steelers allowed the most fantasy points per game to receivers, but in games this year that Matt Ryan has started, Michael Pittman is averaging 10 targets per game and just under 16 fantasy points per game. So I, I know there was a couple of down games when Matt Ryan sat. They, those two games are kind of throwing off the numbers for all of the Colts players, uh, but it's much, much better when Ryan's out there. And this being a matchup where, you know, the secondary can be taken advantage of, I, I like Michael Pittman. So I'm going to kind of keep that theme going, and I'm going to talk about Pittman's teammate, Paris Campbell. Love it. Who, like, maybe in shallower leagues isn't a must-start, but certainly I think in 12-team and definitely anything deeper than that is a must-start this week because of a lot of the things that Florio said about the Steelers' defense, but also for Campbell himself. In three of the last four games he's played with Matt Ryan as the starter, he's had at least 18 fantasy points, and he really has sort of elbowed Alec Pierce aside as the wide receiver, too, there in Indianapolis. And this is a game where I even like Matt Ryan as a streaming option or a two QB option this week, but Paris Campbell, Michael Pittman, I think both belong in fantasy lineups for Monday night's game against Pittsburgh. Let's get to a few more rapid fire questions via Twitter. We got one coming from Nick Rosenberg who wants to know who do I start at wide receiver two? And he's giving us three charger options. Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, or Josh Palmer chose Williams last week and that was the wrong choice. I would also say maybe you don't have three charger receivers because that's <laughs> going to be frustrating. I mean, it's late in the season now, but uh, of those three, who do you like the most? I'm going to go with Keenan Allen here. Uh, Mike Williams still was a DNP on Thursday. Josh Palmer, I know he's coming off of a huge game, but he's been up and down this season. Keenan Allen returned last week. He was limited, but he looked good. Like, he won downfield. Justin Herbert clearly trusts him more. Uh, and Justin Herbert was very vocal about that, like how it feels good to have his normal guys back in the huddle with him. Uh, I, I just think Keenan Allen is the safest volume. Man. He's got the safest floor. He's the most stable of the three. As you mentioned, Williams is banged up. Palmer is just incredibly volatile because of how they use him in the offense. So if you need just a safe, steady floor, Keenan Allen's your guy. Now, if you're swinging for the fences, you know, go ahead and run Josh Palmer out there because he's kind of the home run guy. But I would feel much more comfortable with Keenan Allen. Next one from Dennis D. Cruz. Has, he uh, needs a question with flex help. Deontay Foreman, Isaiah Pacheco, or Devonta Smith in a full point PPR? This is a really tough one because like, <laughs> Foreman and Pacheco are kind of very similar running backs. They don't do a whole lot in the passing game, so they get all their production on the ground, which means low floor, but at least Foreman is fast, unlike Pacheco, uh, but Pacheco <laughs> is the better matchup. I'm just going to go with Devonta Smith here because the other two guys could easily finish in single digits. Devonta Smith has the highest ceiling. Yeah, especially because it's a PPR league. I think if we were talking standard, I would lean towards one of the running backs. But with it being PPR, I would tend to side with the wide receiver. So I would go with Devonta Smith, even though I get it. He has been pretty volatile as, as well so yeah. far this season. But I, I think this is a good opportunity for him. Last one from Keaton Buchanan. I traded for T. Higgins when Jamar Chase was hurt. So now what do I do with T. when Chase comes back this week? Because then I would have two receivers on the same team. Please help. 
Yeah, so this is what we were sort of talking about with uh, the previous question from Nick about three Charger wide receivers. But uh, this one I, I sort of understand, right, because you made a decision. I would say this week, start them both. Uh, long term, I don't know what you do, but especially now that the trade deadline is hitting. Um, but this week, I'd start them both. For, I, I agree. Yeah. I mean, the Titans are a bad matchup. Uh, T. Higgins has been balling. I, like, yeah. I'd actually probably feel more comfortable this week with T than with Chase, just because Chase could be limited. But I agree. I think you start them both. And honestly, if there's any top two wide receiver punch to have in the league, this it's is bad. the combo you yeah, want. Yeah, exactly. If you're going to take two wide receivers from the same team, those are two pretty good ones to have in that Bengals offense there. So good luck, Keaton. Hopefully it helps you get a win. And uh, if you're not in the playoffs, hope you get there. And if you already are, hope you get a, a better seed in the playoffs. Time now to take a look around the World Wide Web. Now, apparently, not apparently, it is true. The Eagles offensive line is releasing a Christmas album. Now that we're through Thanksgiving and we are officially into Christmas season, that's S-Z-N, uh, Jason Kelsey, Lane Johnson, Jordan Mailata are releasing a Philly special Christmas. It's expected to hit the stores or the streaming services, probably more importantly, because I don't think anybody goes to record stores anymore. So hitting the streaming services on December 23rd. I don't. Did you see there's a clip floating around Twitter of them singing? And Jordan Mailata can, like, he can sing. Like, I guess he was on The Masked Singer earlier, uh, like last season. He's good. I, I was impressed. When I saw you, you, you shared this tweet with us, mm -hmm. and when I first saw it, I was like, oh, I, I just read the text. I was like, this must be something from, like, It's Always Sunny or something like that. <laughs> and then I was like, wait, these are the linemen. And I was I was blown away. Blown away. Jordan Mailata is legitimately good. Kelsey and Lane Johnson, not too bad themselves. So I know the folks in Philly are already about it. In fact, I'm, I'm actually wearing a, uh, a, a shirt uh, Santa booed first. Uh, a bunch of, so, you know, it's a bunch of guys. Shout out to a bunch of these guys in Philly who do a podcast about Philly sports. They're a lot of fun. You should go check them out. Um, but it's also just a good kind of Christmas themed uh, title that they got right there. But that led us to ask the question, do you have a favorite holiday album? I don't know if I have a, a favorite holiday album. I have a lot of favorite holiday songs. Okay. Um, like, you know, Mariah Carey is always a, she's a staple. She's a staple. I, I like this. You can make fun of me for this one. I like the uh, Alvin and the Chipmunks Christmas song. Okay. I've always liked that one since I was right. a kid. I'm biased. I like the the Mac Miller and Ariana Grande, um, Baby It's Cold Outside okay. remix. Um, All right. But I don't know if I have a favorite album. I would say that my favorite album, and this really does go back to childhood and nostalgia. It is, and this is like, this is like the old man in me. But is the Nat King Cole Christmas album, right? Okay. Because I think I think Nat King Cole's version of a Christmas song is the greatest holiday song there is. I know, you know, nowadays all the millennials and Gen Zers love Mariah Carey. I think it's been played to death. But <laughs> Nat King Cole's A Christmas Song is amazing, and it just always will, will remind me of Christmas with my family and decorating the tree and opening presents and all that sort of thing. So there's very much some nostalgia behind it. Uh, I would say in terms of new Christmas songs. Uh, not gonna lie to you, Lil John did a Christmas song. I think with the Kool Aid Man recently. That is, I know it sounds this. ridiculous. It is a banger. It is absolutely a banger. I have to go listen. I'm to gonna this. go find it when we're done with this show. I'm gonna put it in Slack for everybody here to hear. <laughs> it is amazing. I heard it last, a couple years ago. Like I came in, I'm like, what is this? This seems like trash. I listen to it. I'm like, okay, this is actually legit good. <laughs> so uh, that is one of my favorites <laughs> of a more recent vintage. All right, enough from me just rambling on about things that are inane and silly and you probably are rolling your eyes at. That'll do it for this edition of the Fantasy Q&A Show. Of course, you can always subscribe to this show. You will get all five of our fantasy shows during the week in your podcast feed. You can always check us out, of course, live on the NFL Fast channels, in the Fantasy app, and at YouTube.com slash NFL Fantasy Football. You can always keep sending us your questions, of course, at NFL Fantasy. We'll try to answer as many of them as we can. Aaron's still not eating vegetables, so he still has to handle the bulk of those. But in the meantime, we hope you enjoy Week 12. You hope you've had a great Thanksgiving and looking forward to the rest of the holiday season as well. So enjoy the games on Sunday, and we'll talk to you next week.